Hi, I'm Cliff, and this is my garage. Today, we're going to continue on with our upgrade of the braking systems on the Cayman by replacing the stock master cylinder with an upgraded unit from a 911 GT3. Hey, welcome back to the garage. And if this is your first time joining me, thanks for dropping by. So as my regular viewers know, I've been in the process of upgrading the Cayman's braking systems to perform better on the track. Now in episode one, we replaced the stock cross-drilled rotors with some slotted units from Sebro, and we also upgraded the brake pads from the stock street Techstar pads to some uh, race pads from Pagid or Pagid, not sure exactly how that's pronounced. Someday I'm going to find out and I'll let you know. In episode two, we upgraded the calipers by replacing the internal seals and the dust boots with new high temperature versions made out of silicone. We also replaced the stock rubber brake lines with new ones made of braided stainless steel. So our next step in this is to replace the standard master cylinder with an upgraded unit that comes out of a 911 GT3. And the way it's upgraded is that it has a larger cylinder inside of it, or a larger piston. When it, with hydraulics, when you increase the size of the pressure piston, you're reducing its stroke, the amount of uh, distance that it needs to move. It just overall gives you a better feel and it um, alleviates one problem that a lot of people don't like about the Cayman is the very long pedal throw, the brake pedal throw to get down to maximum pressure. This kind of um, bothers people the, the moving so far and from what I understand people have more difficulty doing a proper heel and toe downshift because the pedal goes down so low to the floor. The new master cylinder was about $300 I believe I got it from Pelican Parts. I'm not sure I'll verify that here in the video or down in the video description below. I'll give you a link to where I did buy it from. This is gonna be kind of interesting because in almost 50 years of wrenching on cars, one of the things I've never done is replace the master cylinder. It's just not something you commonly do on a car and I've just never had the opportunity to do it. So this is going to be a new experience for me and I really wouldn't be surprised if I make some mistakes along the way. Well, I think that's enough talking about it. Let's do it. Our first step is to actually get at the master cylinder, which is hiding behind this plastic shroud. That's the thing all the way across here. So we're, we're going to need to remove this. The it, it, it is possible to get this out, I suppose, without removing this rubber seal, but just, just pull up on the seal and it comes loose some adhesive there that'll kind of flake everywhere and just lay it down here into the bottom. Next we have to remove a set of, let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, I think I counted it right, eight screws and these are T15 Torx screws. So those were all along the top and there are two more. One is over underneath that light and the other one is kind of in the same position over here on this side. On a project like this, uh, sometimes it's tough to keep track of all the screws and fasteners. I like using these little um, uh, snack size Ziploc bags. And just put all the fasteners in there and then take like a piece of painter's tape and just tape it directly to the part. Now that all the screws are removed, we can just kind of work on pulling this out of here. It just wiggles loose. 
Now you gotta be careful because there's a tab here. This liner piece here has a tab that pokes into a slot here and also you gotta deal with the connector for this light. So to get the other end loose first and then pull this, this piece in that direction and then you can reach back here and on the bottom of that light, there's a little like U-shaped connector that you pull off. Let me show you that in a second. And then this just comes right out. And here's that uh, connector I was talking about. Just sort of tuck that up out of the way. So here is our uh, brake booster. This is your, your what gives you power brakes. This is our brake fluid reservoir. And underneath here, the silver thing, this is our... Um, brake master cylinder. This is a line that warns you about low brake fluid. It's a sensor or a connector to a sensor. This is your anti-lock brake system and these are the two hydraulic lines that connect to the master cylinder. We need to like pull this reservoir off of here. We need to break these lines loose and of course everything here is full of hydraulic fluid so I, I don't see how we can possibly do any of this without making a mess. So I'm going to, um, and also brake fluid is fairly nasty stuff. So I want to make sure I don't get it all over stuff, especially the very expensive uh, stereo amps that are hiding down there. So uh, I'm going to like put a plastic liner around it. And what I like using is I, I found these heavy duty um, trash can liners for like 96 gallon you know, the, the trash cans that you use that you take out of your street for your garbage company. And uh, I cut the bottom off it and then slit up one side using uh, one of the folds as a guide. And it gives me a nice, huge piece of plastic. Uh, these, these bags are great. Uh, our garbage company has really recently made us put, basically bag everything. So I'm having to use these liners now in my shop trash cans. And these things are just fantastic. They fit well, they hold up well, and they're not expensive at all. I'll, I'll give you a link to the ones I, to where I get these off of Amazon. Now looking carefully, these big red wires down here, by the way, that's the, um, I believe the power for the, the uh, stereo amps that are down here. And let's see, so we're going to need to like make sure we get this plastic tucked up under here good. We have to wiggle those wires kind of out of the way and uh, make sure that we get everything tucked in so that whatever leaks down is going to definitely get caught. We don't want to make a mess here. Okay, so you will not have to deal with these wires unless you've had someone install a stereo system like this. See if I can, oh yeah, okay, come get those out of the way there. Just take your time doing this. And make sure you get it right. Uh, I'm already getting hung up on something. Oh, okay. Yep. Now, I'm just going to go stick this as far as I can up underneath the brake booster. Okay, this line is like in a little plastic clip here. I'm going to pop it out of that to help me get this in here better. I think that's pretty good. I'm also going to take and cram some paper towels in here to... Uh, catch any dripping so that it's not just flowing down. That's the theory anyway. All right, now I'm gonna take and spread this out and make a nice, well, hatch basin out of the trunk. Let's see, I think I'll, uh, yeah, I'll try using like some vinyl wrapping magnets to hold this in place, unless I find they get in my way. I've talked about these things before. It's these uh, stainless steel clothespins. These things come in handy a lot. Uh, as usual, Amazon link in the description below. 
Okay, I think we have got that about as good as we can get it. What we do now is uh, let me find a good spot to land this. Remove this little drain or strainer cup here. Set that aside. And I'm going to use this baster to remove as much fluid as I can from the reservoir here. And I've got a, a graduated cylinder down here that I use. Ooh, I am making a mess. I think I'm going to pick it up like this. Yes. This is a big graduated cylinder I use to uh, do brake fluid flushes. I'm just going to drain as much of this brake fluid as I possibly can. My plan is to reuse this because this is extremely expensive Castrol SRF brake fluid that I just put in a couple weeks ago. 75 ish dollars a quart. Hmm, there's still quite a bit in there, but I can't get at it. Yeah, that's, that's as good as I'm going to be able to do. Yeah, I've already dripped quite a bit down there around the brake booster. So it's a good thing I've got that plastic in there. Yep, yeah, I was talking about just like taking and tucking paper towels in here around in the area. Try and absorb spillage because I know that these lines are going to come loose. Well, I'll just do what I can. Now, this reservoir supposedly is going to come straight off, but I need to get some, some gloves first. Okay, much better now. Uh, those of you that watch the channel regularly know of my love for two types of gloves. Um, one is these pug gloves, is generic work gloves, fantastic, cheap, reusable, uh, just a great deal, just a perfectly good glove, period. And then the for, for wet work like this, I uh, really like these, uh, what do they call, Glove Works HD gloves. They are... Uh, like double thickness they're really great they're reusable absolutely love them okay so oh wait first we need to re remove the sensor here let's see usually these sensors you squeeze here we go you squeeze these two prongs here and that that releases the clip and it just pops right off All right, now we should be good. Get some paper towels ready here. And this, you know, I think actually, I'll take and put the graduated cylinder back in here. This supposedly just comes right off. And it's not coming right off. There we go. That was one. Whoa. All right. That was messy. And this reservoir is now extremely very slippery now we're going to take a t45 bit 
and we're gonna break loose these connectors for these two bolts. Now we're gonna break loose these two hydraulic lines. For that, we're gonna use a 13 millimeter flare nut wrench. Make sure you use a flare nut wrench, not a regular wrench or an adjustable wrench because you don't want to round these things off. Um, I mean, a full set of flare nut wrenches is like 10 bucks. So make the investment and do the job right. I'll give you a link to the ones I use down in the description below. And again, I'm just going to break these loose. You know, well, the way they work is you put it over the line, you slide it down onto the nut, and then do what you're going to do. And then you just slide it off the net, and it comes out over the line. Okay, everything is now broken loose. I think we're about to make a very large mess. Yes, there's a considerable amount of brake fluid down in there. Uh, it was a very good decision to put this in and hopefully I haven't messed it up and gotten more down or where it's leaking out behind this thing. Okay, so now let's take and um, I'm gonna grab a couple more of these clothes pins have them here if I need to, to try and hold these brake lines or these hydraulic lines after I cut them loose. You know what? Let me uh, just do something real quick here. Just in case, I'm going to take a piece of painter's tape. Make sure it wasn't going to stick, but I'm going to wrap it all the way around to mark the front one. Make sure I don't get these lines confused later. We're removing the rear one first. The paper towel is getting in my way. Okay. Not working as well as I'd hoped. Okay. It doesn't make me real comfortable there. Just leave it up for the moment. Get this one loose. And again, try it. Okay, well that seems to be sitting it seems to be sitting there fine. All right, so now let's try removing this master cylinder. I swapped the bit socket over to my impact driver just to make this job quicker. Oh, goodness. Well, that was certainly uh, a longer bolt than I was expecting. Hmm. This did not come loose. In fact, that seemed to be holding the entire, that's going through and holding the brake booster and everything to the firewall. Hey, let me make sure I didn't miss some kind of an attachment. Let's look at the other. Okay, so basically this is like a tight fit. Uh, okay. Here to be working. Unless this thing, this nut looking thing, okay, maybe that's got to come loose. I reinstalled one of the bolts to stabilize this thing. This is a 20, 22, a 22 millimeter socket. Okay. I think that's how this comes loose. The factory service manual portion I looked at was surprisingly unclear 
on how this is supposed to work. Should. If I can break this loose while leaving that bolt in. Yes, I can. Okay, so I'd say the proper way to do this is uh, loosen these bolts just a bit, the long bolts, and then loosen these collar pieces. Okay, that was getting just way too tedious. Yeah, that's exactly what it, it is. That collar piece holds it on. Uh, I, I'm, I'm finally seeing how this works. Uh, these bolts don't come out at all. Send this one back up just a bit. So that I can get this one in place. Okay, so what we've learned is that these bolts don't come out at all. Those collar pieces come off just fine around them. Yep, that, that comes off all by itself. The bolts stay in place. All right, there is the standard master cylinder, Oop, which is leaking fluid. Okay, so here's our new GT3 master cylinder. It comes with these plugs that need to be removed. And it just goes right back in the same spot. You need to line up the plunger back there into this opening okay. and now we just put those collars back on I'm going to go see if I can look up some torque specs for these two uh, collar pieces here. There's probably, I've seen them give torque specs for these hydraulic fittings, but I don't know how you do that because I've never seen a, a torque wrench that would work with, as a um, flare nut wrench. So I'm going to go see if I can find that information and I'll be right back. Okay, so after a bit of digging, I found that the torque spec for these bolts that hold the brake booster on is 17 foot-pounds. Then for these, nut collar things, it's 36 pounds. If you have a torque wrench that'll work with the flare nuts, the torque spec on those is 19 foot pounds, but I'm just gonna have to wing it. And then using the um, flare nut wrench, 13 millimeters, I'll just tighten these down to my, what my experience and touch tell me is 19 foot pounds. And I feel it's tight enough to seal without being ridiculously tight. Yeah, that feels good to me. I guess time will tell. So now let's install the um, the reservoir again. I'm going to take and get, hopefully without making a mess, a little bit 
the brake fluid and just put it on here. It's a bit of lubricant. Oh, okay, I see. There's a sort of a, a flared connection there that that's what makes it so hard to come out um, and probably to go in. Theoretically, all they do is push this down. <sighs> okay. Okay. That appears to be fully seated. Yep, it's all the way down on those rubber seals. Okay. Theoretically, that's done. Oops, I forgot to reconnect the sensor. Now it's done. Okay, I see, uh, yeah, I see a little bit of mess there, but like the vast majority of it was caught by the paper towels and the plastic. Actually, no, no, this, these, uh, well, gosh, now I can't even remember. I think that these were actually on top of the plastic. That's why these got a little bit of hydraulic fluid on them. Down here, actually, uh, in that area, I don't see anything at all. So I think that was pretty much a 100% success on that. And toss this in the trash. Once I had everything put back together, then I had to do a full system bleed in order to get all the air out of the master cylinder, the lines, the calipers, the whole nine yards. Otherwise, that air in there is going to be compressible and your brake is going to be, your brake pedal is going to be super soft and spongy and your brakes aren't going to work very well. Now, normally I use a vacuum bleeder because in the past I've used several uh, pressure bleeders and they were a giant pain in the butt to use. I just I just didn't like it. But based on someone's recommendation, I decided to give this motive power or pressure bleeder a, a try. And I found it, I really like it. It works well. It's not a pain in the butt to use like the others I had tried. And so I think I've, uh, I've switched teams. I've gone now from uh, the vacuum bleeder to the pressure bleeder. I'll give you a link in the video description below to uh, an, an Amazon link where you can buy your very own. Since I had never replaced a master cylinder before, I was really kind of paranoid about making sure I got every bit of air out of the system. And so I vastly overbled the brakes. What I did is I ended up pulling out 300 milliliters out of each corner. And by, I also pulled a 200 out of the outer caliper first, or the outer bleed plug first, and then an additional 100 out of the inner bleed plug. It's kind of hard to say sometimes. So that's of course a lot of fluid and so what I did was I was just take and collect it in uh, my cat little catch tube that I use and then I poured it right back into the power bleeder I just kept cycling it back in now I know some people are going to be saying well wait a minute that's that's not right you can't do that because you let this thing out there or let the stuff out there. It's hydro hydroscopic, which means it absorbs water out of the air. And now your brake fluid is ruined because it's all full of water. Well, I didn't think that was true, but just to be sure, I did go in and test it out afterwards with a um, brake fluid moisture pen. And I, it tested that at a complete 0% moisture. So it's not a problem. If you don't have one of these pans, they're super cheap. I'll give you a link to the one that I use in the video description below. After the brakes have been completely bled, then came the moment of truth. Got in the car, started it up, pressed on the pedal, and I liked it. <laughs> the GT3 Master Cylinder makes a definite difference in the way the brakes feel. There's not as much pedal throw. I feel like uh, I just... Um, it feels firmer. I just can't really quantify it other than to say, I give it a thumbs up. I think it was well worth the $300. Now, if you have to have someone do it, 
Oh, let me let me back up and say this again. This is not a mod for the street. If you are just driving your Porsche on the street on twisty roads, just a typical driver, you do not need to do this. There's just no point. Now, for the track drivers, the guys that are really pushing their brakes, I think this $300 upgrade is well worth it. If you've got to shell out a couple of grand for Porsche to do it for you, then I'm not so sure it's worth it. But, you know, if, well, if you can afford to have Porsche do your maintenance, then, you know, it's not that big a deal to you probably. And then it probably is worth the couple of grand to get the upgraded master cylinder. Of course, all I've done so far is just done some street testing with it. I had, well, I've done some pretty heavy street testing, uh, getting up to a pretty good amount of speed and on some back deserted roads around here, and then really jamming on the brakes, um, pushing right up to the limit, to the threshold of engaging the ABS. And it, it, it really does feel good. Of course, the true test, a little bit, is going to come um, in a week or two when I go to my first autocross event. And then in about six weeks, I'm going to be having another uh, DE, or driver education event, up at Roebling Road Raceway. Roebling Road Raceway. And uh, that's uh, going to be a better test of how all this is working together. But so far, i got to say I really like it. Now, before you go, please go down there, smash that thumbs up button, give me a like on the video. It really helps to grow the channel in terms of letting YouTube know that you enjoyed this video and you found it useful. And while you're down there, go find that big red shiny subscribe button. If you're not one of my subscribers, give it a click and subscribe to the channel. Again, this also helps in terms of growing the channel and letting YouTube know that you're interested in the content that I'm making. It doesn't cost a thing, it's completely free. And finally, if you'd like to keep up with everything I'm doing here in the garage, all the upgrades to the Cayman as part of Project 987.2, all the upgrades I'm doing to the garage itself and any other projects that I'm working on, go find that bell icon and give it a click. It'll change shape and that shows you that you've activated notifications on this channel. And that way, YouTube will let you know every time that I post something new from here in Cliff's Garage. I'll see you next time.